The Last of Us 2 is basically a miscarriage. Not even born and already dead. What we need to do is change the old meme, quote, still a better story than Twilight, and change it to still a better story than Last of Us 2. Because when I first looked at Abby, I thought this was a Gears of War character. I thought it was Marcus Phoenix's super swole big brother in the next rated M for Mam Gears game. But unfortunately not, it's the main character of The Last of Us Part 2 that you have to control for the majority of the game. Aren't you excited? But do not worry because like everyone else, I've decided that Part 2 takes place in an alternate universe, which isn't canon compared to Part 2. Before we get into the video, make sure you hit that like button, watch the whole video to piss off the unhinged basement dwelling virgin soy boy Sony fanboys, who have impressively shown to be even more pathetic than The Last of Us Part 2. When you get sucked into brand wars, you lack any real value in your life. Frankly, I love their comments because there's nothing better than waking up in the morning with a fresh brewed cup of decaf from the tears of PlayStation fanboys. Now. On to the video, Neil Cuckman is a pseudo-intellectual that's ruining Naughty Dog's legacy. This Druckmann guy has no room to talk about bigotry and the such when he bullied the lead female writer out of the company so he could take her place. Naughty Dog literally went from crash to trash. Then again, what do you expect when you hire Anita Sarkeesian who's nothing more than a pretentious, obnoxious leech? This girl is like the opposite of Midas Touch. Instead of making things turn to gold, it turns to shit. The Last of Us Part 1 was about the struggling bond of a man who lost his daughter and a girl who becomes his symbolic daughter. And is possibly the only hope for the human race. And in the second game, it's all about two lesbians sniffing each other's farts. Yes, you can experience the scissoring quick time event between Ellie and her girlfriend. I know what everybody must be thinking. Finally, a game that allows me to feel like a discriminated lesbian. Now I understand when they preach about revolutionizing the industry. So stunning and brave, Neil. Bravo. Let's actually break this down. Naughty Dog killed off a loving father who went through hell in the first game. He struggled, fought, he survived. He found a new meaning in life after Sarah's death. All this, and while we as fans follow this amazing journey, and the climactic reward we get is that in the second game, he dies very early on to a practically meaningless death. The premise of Joe dying is something I'm completely open to. In fact, many fans of The Last of Us 2 are expecting Joe to die, me included. We all understand that this is a universe that Naughty Dog has created with everything being hyper-realistic and expecting the unexpected. However, the main protagonist who we've grown attached to is that it's paramount that he's given a hero's death. Like I've said in a previous video, his death serves no purpose other than fill some boring revenge trope storyline. If Abby's father had a bigger role in the first game, then maybe it could be plausible. But basing an entire sequel off a random NPC that had less than a minute of screen time, that ladies and gentlemen is lazy writing at its finest. Joel doesn't do anything honourable like sacrifice himself for the greater good or save Ellie. He gets completely humiliated by a roid raged man with a golf club. And speaking of that freak, she kills Joel, the character whose story pretty much started The Last of Us, and then we're forced to play as her for 6 to 10 hours. Who at Naughty Dog thought this was a good idea? I was incredibly disturbed by Joel's death when I saw the leak, and even more disturbed when we find out that we're forced to play as his killer. And what makes us even worse is that in the final confrontation, we are not controlling Ellie, we're controlling Abby. And if the ending is any indication, I don't want to see a part 3. I am not giving my money to a game developer that goes out of his way to attack customers who don't align with his ideological stance. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching Manix out.